right, today we're going to be reading The Cast of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, normally when I approach a text like this, which is kind of difficult, I'm just going to read, for example, the very first paragraph for you, just so you can hear the difficulty of the words within this paragraph. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had bore the best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled. But the very definitiveness with which it had been resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. Now, whenever I read anything, I always look for a couple things. The number one thing I look for is a who. Now, this is actually kind of easy within this uh, text because you see right away you have a couple of eyes. So the I, the who, in this case, is the narrator. Okay, so then the next thing I do is I look for had what problem. Now, when I'm looking for a problem, I look for a couple things. Number one, I might look, it should be some sort of action word, okay? Uh, number two, it should be some sort of negative word. Number three, I also look for this little but word because a lot of times there's a lot of information that goes right after that word but. So for example, um, another thing I look for is I look for repeated words and phrases, not just here, but also throughout the passage. So if I skim and scan, I actually do see that little, I call it the but word. But when he ventured upon insight, I vowed revenge. Okay. So if you look at that, I vowed, vowed is an action word, but what did he vow? Revenge. So his problem, oh, but why? Okay, so this is actually what he's gonna do. We didn't know the problem, but if you look before them, when he ventured, he, so some dude insulted him because when you have revenge, there's gotta be a reason why there is revenge. So the problem is he was insulted And then that's another thing that I look for. After the problem, I look for, okay, so how is he gonna solve it? Well, in this case, we already know he's going to get revenge. All right. So throughout the thing, I'm still gonna look for these little but words and I'm still gonna look for repeated words and phrases. The other thing I'm going to look for is maybe some vocabulary that I'm not really familiar with. All right. However, oh, here we go, you. Oh, here we go, sorry. When he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge, you. All right, so now I know he's talking to me, the reader. Now this kind of reminds me of when Mrs. Ingle read the Telltale Heart, po, who that was also written by Poe. He'd say, you, you consider me mad. So I wonder if Poe just loves to just talk to his readers. You, who know so well the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, again, there's those like transition words, however, that I gave utterance to a threat, will not. So he will not tell him that he's going to threaten him in any way. At last, 
I would be avenged. So avenged is just a really similar word for revenge. This was a point definitively settled, but the very definitiveness upon it which was resolved. Okay, so definite, definite. This was definitely resolved. I am definitely going to get my revenge, but it precluded the idea of risk. Well, yeah, revenge is risky. And then he says, I must not only punish, but punish. Again, we have a repeated word. We have that but word, but punish with impunity. All right. Well, here's that vocab part. Impunity. What does that mean? All right. So I'm going to go over to Google here. and I'm going to type in in. Impunity. Let's see what comes up. Impunity. Impunity means exempt from punishment or loss or escape from fines. Okay, so I think what that means, he's going to punish with impunity. I think it means he wants to punish without getting caught. Hmm. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes the redresser. Whoa. Redresser unredressed. So let's look at redress. Re Dress. Okay, I'm going over to handy dandy Google. Let's go redress. Here we go. Redress. Let's see. To set right. Okay, so redress is set right. Okay. A wrong is set right when retribution overtakes the redresser. A wrong is set right. Retribution? What is retribution? Okay, let's look that one up. Retribution. Let's go. Retribution, here we go. Retribution, punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance. Hmm. So again, this is the, oh, he's going to punish with revenge. Okay, so what does this mean? A wrong is set right when the punishment or the revenge overtakes its redresser. It is equally set right when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. So basically he's kind of saying that this guy really needs to feel the punishment. He really needs to feel the revenge, okay? Wow, I don't wanna get on his bad side. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed I had given Fortunato, oh, hold on, capital letter here, so that's the name. Oh, that's the dude he wants to get revenge on. I had given Fortunato cause to doubt my goodwill. I continued, as my want to smile in his face. Huh. That kind of goes back to that part up there where he said that he did not talk to him about any threat. He's smiling at him. And he did not perceive that my smile, again, another repeated word, 
was now the thought of his immolation. There's a word. Immolation. What does that mean? There we go. Immo. Oh, there we go. Immolation. Okay. Immolation meaning sprinkled with sacrificial meal, huh? A sacrifice. I keep saying sacrifice three times. So wow. Okay. This dude. Oh, there goes my pen. Is going to sacrifice him. This is like some pretty like dark stuff, man. Okay. He had a weak point, this Fortunato. Here we go. Although in other regards, he was a man to be respected and even feared, he prided himself on connoisseurship. What is that? There's this, there's like lots of words in this one. Con no sewer ship all right going back to the google uh, oh, there we go okay oh look at this it's got pictures and everything okay a connoisseur is a person who has a great deal of knowledge about the fine arts cuisine or an expert judge in a matter of taste all right, so um, it's someone who can judge stuff through their knowledge. So a connoisseur, judge stuff through knowledge. Okay. So Fortunato could judge stuff through his knowledge. Okay. Oh, here we go. In wine. So I'm going to cross off stuff. He's really going to judge wine through his knowledge. Okay. Um, few Italians. Oh, here we go. This is where it takes place. Italy. Have the true Vocheroso spirit. For the most part, their enthusiasm is adopted to suit the time and opportunity to practice and posture upon the British. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think it's really that important because I think I so far have the big idea. I got there's a narrator. He's insulted, so he's going to get revenge. But he wants to get revenge without getting caught. And he's going to set things right by punishing him to the point where he's gonna feel it and be like a sacrifice. But what does all this have to do with Fortunato knowing about wine? This just kind of goes on and on, blah, blah, blah. Here, let me look at that but word again and see if that gives me anything. But in the matter of wines, he was sincere. All right, still not sure what this wine has to do with anything. In this respect, I did not differ from him materially. I was as skilled in Italian vintages myself and bought largely whenever I could. All right, so I'm still not sure what this wine has to do with anything, but maybe we'll figure that out tomorrow. But here's what I do want you to do. I want you to create a summary. And when you create a summary, I want you to say who had what problem and how were they going to solve it? Go ahead.